so hi guys, uh, my name is Paige Barclay, I'm a fourth year politics student and I'm going to talk about terrorism in the media. So this is a topic that's got more popular over time, particularly within the last year. I'm sure you've all seen headlines like these. Um, so 2015 saw intense debate over the existence of some kind of West versus the rest kind of divide in terms of news coverage of terrorism. Um, but arguments on each side, oh, went forward a bit. But arguments on each side of the debate um, lacked actual evidence in terms of their arguments. Um, so that was like a key sort of motivator for my research into this area. So in this talk, I'm going to first outline why we should be interested in media coverage of terrorism. And then I'm going to discuss my research on the coverage of the Charlie Hebdo and Boko Haram bag attacks of last year. So why should we be interested in how the media covers terrorism? Well, we should first be aware that not all attacks are covered equally, and some aren't covered at all. Just over half of terrorist attacks get any coverage in the media. So with this in mind, we should be aware of the sort of impacts this can have. So firstly, coverage can distort individual perceptions of terrorism. News media should be thought of as our window on the world, our primary source shaping the what we perceive as the realities of phenomena and places beyond our immediate experience. So in the... In the so in terms of terrorism, imbalanced coverage can lead to the formation of a distorted picture of what terrorism is and how it should be combated. In this sense, it sets the agenda in people's minds about what's important. So secondly, it can influence how governments react to terrorism. So for example, persistent coverage can pressure governments into taking strong action where perhaps more deliberation would have been better. And of course, the first point also feeds into the second point. And third, it can actually aid the terrorist cause. Terrorism is primarily a psychological weapon used to instill fear in those beyond its immediate victims. So publicity and hence the media are essential in spreading this fear. So these are all important things to keep in mind as we go through the research findings. So my research consisted of comparing the coverage of the January 2015 Charlie Hebdo and Boko Haram bag attack. And before we go on to talk about the findings, I'll give a quick outline of the attacks as a sort of refresher. So, as the name suggests, the Charlie Hebdo attack centred around the shooting of Charlie Hebdo staff at their headquarters in Paris. It was carried out by two French brothers and alongside them another attacker took hostages at a French supermarket. All three died at the hands of French police and it was revealed afterwards they had links with Al-Qaeda who claimed responsibility for the attack. So over two days there were 17 victims, eight of whom were Charlie Hebdo staff. So in the case of Baga, on the other hand, there were a series of large-scale attacks launched in the town's population by Boko Haram, a terrorist organisation based in Nigeria. While Nigerian army soldiers and locals attempted to fight back, they were quickly overwhelmed. The death toll here has remained unclear. While the Nigerian army claims that no more than 100 people 150 people died, Amnesty International cites local reports of up to 2,000. So, how did I investigate coverage of these attacks? I asked two research questions. First, did the Charlie Hebdo attack received, receive greater coverage than the Baga attack? And second, did this coverage differ depending on the location of a news outlet in relation to the attack? So I used a database called LexisNexis to collect, a, to collect articles from around the world. So I collected 232 articles from 12 newspapers across six countries. So the UK, Ireland, Nigeria, South Africa, New Zealand and Canada. All articles were drawn from the two highest circulating newspapers of each and were collected for the duration of each attack plus seven days. should really point out at this point that this research is limited to English-speaking countries because I can't speak any other language. So in that sense, any representations of each geographical area that I'll talk about in the second research question, it should be known that that will be limited in this, in this sense. So I analysed the coverage in terms of both quantity and quality. So for quantity, I measured the number of articles published, the length of the articles, and the prominence of the articles. So how far to the front of a newspaper were they published? And then for quality, I recorded the main subject covered by each article. So whether it focused on the basic details of the attack, the bare bones, who, what, when, and where, what happened. Whether it focused on the tributes to victims, or perhaps information on attackers. So now you know how I carried out the research. We'll go through each research question in turn, and I'll show you what I found. So, the first research question, did the Charlie Hebdo attack receive greater news coverage than the Baga attack? I bring up 
a quantity of coverage, if I bring up graph, you can see that 87% of the articles published on either attack were published on the Charlie Hebdo attack. Funnily enough, the two making up the both column were actually about how the Nigerian president issued a statement on the Charlie Hebdo attack but failed to actually say anything about the one in his own country. And in terms of our other measures, no significant difference was found in either the word length or the prominence of articles on either attack. So overall from this we can see that the Charlie Hebdo attack received seven times the coverage of the bag attack. When looking at these charts, it's important to keep in mind the impacts I discussed earlier. So that news coverage helps mould individual perceptions. It can act as an agenda setter, indicating what we should regard as the most important event. So onto the, quant the quality of coverage, if I bring up a chart, uh, we can see a lot of variation in terms of the breadth of subject covered uh, in terms of the Charlie Hebdo attack. So the 19 different subjects were recorded in the analysis. The black sort of slice serves as an aggregation for stories that didn't have enough articles on them to merit their own slice. I've included a, ref a legend for reference, but I'll quickly explain the most important slices. So blue indicates the sort of basic articles about the basic details of the attack, the bare bones, the who, what, when, where. Green is coverage of tributes to victims of the attack. The sort of yellow, it's slightly green here, um, covers sort of details information on the attackers, t any terrorist links they might have. Uh, and then the sort of light green down the bottom is statements by other international governments, other international figures like the Pope, for example. So if I bring up now the chart for BAGA for overall cover coverage, you can immediately see a notable difference. In total, only eight different subjects were covered. And we can also see that the majority of the 28 articles um, published on the BAGA attack focused on the bare bones, basic details of the attack, the who, what, when and where. So we can see a, also a significant difference in terms of the tributes to victims. So the green, the chunk's a lot smaller for the bag attacks. And also we can see that there's absolutely no coverage on the attackers. Um, so I think it's fair to say that there's a lack of coverage of the actual people involved in the bag attack. So if we move on to the second research question, um, did coverage differ based on the location of media outlets in relation to the attack? So the rationale here is that the very business of news would suggest that newspapers cover events most relevant to their audience in order to sell copies of their newspapers. So we'd expect terrorism coverage to be weighted by this logic. So <clears throat> if I bring up this. So for Europe, we can see that 96% of articles, articles published there covered the, baga, the Charlie Hebdo attack. Um, in total, Charlie Hebdo, the Charlie Hebdo attack in Europe received 33 times the coverage of the bag attack. And in terms of the other measures, um, articles on Charlie Hebdo in Europe were found to be significantly longer than in Africa. If we look at Africa, we can find that 72% of articles published covered the Charlie Hebdo attack. Uh, and if we bring up New Zealand and Canada, we find that 92% of articles published covered the Charlie Hebdo attack. And it was also, again, for other measures of quantity, we found that Africa and New Zealand and Canada published articles on bias significantly more prominently, so further to the front of newspapers than Europe did. However, this difference in the prominence can't really equalise the fact that all three of these geographical areas published notably greater number of articles on Charlie Hebdo than Boko Haram. So this is a particularly interesting finding. It goes against one of the common arguments used to justify a perceived lack of media attention in Europe for the bag attack that media outlets cover events most relevant to them. So if we move on to the quality of coverage, coverage by geographical area, we can see for coverage of Charlie Hebdo in Europe, all the, all of the 99 art, across all of the 99 articles, there was quite a lot of variation in the subject matter. And then if I bring up the bag attack, though there's only three articles, it's literally just the bare bones coverage. It's quite a stark contrast. Um, if we look at Africa, if I bring up again Charlie Hebdo, we see again similar variation between Europe, European and African coverage of the attack. And then if I bring up Baga again, there is more variation here if we, when compared to Europe's coverage of the Baga attack, but it still doesn't compare with even African coverage of the Charlie Hebdo attack in terms of variation of subjects. Um, and if I bring up New Zealand and Canada, Again, we can see a real pattern here. There's very, very similar coverage across all of these areas on the Charlie Hebdo attack. But then if I bring up Baga, we see the similar kind of story with, compared to European coverage of the attack, the sort of bare bones kind of focus. 
So what are the key sort of points to take away from this talk? Overall, I found that the Charlie Hebdo attack received seven times coverage of the Baga attack, and coverage was notably more diverse in terms of subject matter. Secondly, when analysed separately, all three of the geographical areas gave greater coverage to Charlie Hebdo, and Europe was particularly favourable, giving 33 times the coverage. So the findings of both research questions conform to the idea that, at least for the cases in countries that's been, that have been discussed, there is a sort of West versus the rest kind of divide in coverage of terrorism. So there are numerous possible reasons as to why this could be the case, and I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on that. Perhaps the most important point to take away from this talk, though, is simply awareness of these kinds of imbalances in, in news coverage, how they impact on our perceptions of events and of terrorism, and how they, how they impact on what we identify as important. So thanks for listening. Any questions?